Before you begin, gather all of your supplies. It is best if a second person is available to attend to the child. When ready, measure out the water for the molding powder. While that is being done, the second person should wash the child's foot with a wet washcloth. Do not dry the foot as this will help with the molding process. Add the pre-measured water to the molding container. When everyone is ready, add the powder to the water. The timing starts when the powder comes into contact with the water, so be sure you are ready before blending. The mixture starts out lavender and as you mix it, it will change to pink and eventually begin to lose color. It is best to use a churning, up and down motion, when stirring. The mixture should be well blended, but will never be completely lump free. It will resemble cake mix batter. Once the mixture is noticeably losing its pink color, you are about halfway through the set time. You should submerge the foot at this time. It is okay if the child wiggles their toes. This is actually good, as it will allow the material to fill every area around the skin. What you do want to avoid is touching the sides, or allowing the foot to lift out of the molding material mixture. When casting a hand using the rectangular casting tray, we suggest angling the container as shown. The material sets from top to bottom, so once you think the material is ready, it is best to wait another 20 to 30 seconds before removing the foot, just to be certain. You know the material is set, when it is not sticky to the touch, it cannot be poked through, and begins to pull away when the ankle is moved as shown in the photo. Remove the foot by first moving it side to side to release the mold from the ankle. Continue to wiggle the foot out of the mold as it loosens from the ankle and then down to the toes. Prepare the casting stone and water amounts as indicated in your directions. Add the powder to the water and allow the water to absorb all the powder before beginning to stir. Stir slowly and consistently trying not to add air to the mix. The mix should be about the consistency of paint, and should pour easily off the spoon. If it is too thick, it will not be able to fill the tiny fingers and toes. If it is not thin enough, add a teaspoon of water to the mix and continue to stir. Add more water if necessary. Stir for about 2 minutes. A good even mix will make for a stronger final casting. Before pouring the casting stone, be sure to remove any excess water from the mold. Position the mold on its side with the toes pointed down. Add casting stone until the toes are filled. While in the toes down position, Gently tap the container to release any air bubbles. Then tilt and turn the tray so that the inside of the mold is lined with casting stone. A brush or toothpick may be used to clear or pop any surface air bubbles that may have formed while lining the mold. With the mold back into the toes down position, continue to fill with stone until the stone begins to spill out. Tap the container to release any air bubbles. Leave in this position for 1 to 2 minutes before continuing to add casting stone. Continue to add more stone, and as you do, gradually tip the mold back into the original position. Fill to the desired level. It is best not to tap or shake the mold once back into the original position. Any air bubbles should have been dealt with, when the mold was in the toes down position. If this is an impression casting for a shallow frame mount, you will only want to fill to the top of the foot as shown here, and not up into the ankle. The casting stone should cure for about 2 hours for an infant-sized casting, and 3 to 4 hours for larger feet. Once set, the stone should be hard and cool to the touch. Once it has cured, carefully peel away the molding material to reveal the statue. Be extra careful around the tiny toes. You will most likely need to sand around the ankle area and possibly pick away molding material from in between the toes. Every precious detail such as footprints, creases, and dimples, are captured in the finished casting. Allow the casting to dry for several days in a well-ventilated area. Do not allow to dry in a box, or other type of container, or on a shelf with enclosed sides. This would dramatically slow down the drying process and may cause moisture to become trapped. You may use a small fan to move air around the casting, but do not dry in direct sunlight, or near a heat source. It can take anywhere from 3 to 10 days to fully dry depending on the environment and casting size. Once dry, you may seal with acrylic paints, 
or other sealant meant for plasters and bisques. We hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions not answered here, our FAQ page link can be found at the bottom of the castingkeepsakes.com webpage under the customer service heading.